flesh-ripping fangs, bone-crushing jaws, poison-filled stingers, skin-ripping claws. Survival in the animal kingdom often means a fight to the finish, filled with all-out attacks, amazing ambushes, and dances of death. To survive, animals have become pack hunters, lone wolves, and masters of deception. But above all, to survive has meant developing dangerous instincts, the exact kind you will see on this wild episode of Killer Instincts. They take their time because they know time is on their side. Patient, quiet, waiting. Time-tested tactics where the meals deliver themselves and the prey rarely see the attack coming. When the strike happens, it happens in a violent flurry. Efficient, effective, and often over for the prey in an instant. On this episode of Killer Instincts, we will meet three of the world's best lurkers. Ambush predators that hide in the dark, or perfectly blend into their surroundings, or find the perfect place to lay a trap. They truly have mastered the art of the slow hunt. We'll start with the American alligator, a true survivor who made it past the great dinosaur extinction. Next, we'll slither up to the mighty python, a suffocating predator who has adapted killer instincts whether hiding in trees, slithering across land, or swimming in waters. Last, we'll dive into the serpentine world of the menacing-looking and highly popular moray eel, a slithery species with alien-like features. Each of these three evolved special skill sets that ensure their slow hunting styles lead them to survive and thrive. It predates the age of the dinosaur and is a rare modern success story. This first predator is cold-blooded, yet ferociously protective of its young. While this reptile is an opportunistic eater who will eat whatever is available, it can go months without food to sustain it. But with killer instincts like these, this cold-blooded killer rarely needs to go a day without food. A patient predator, it is known to stalk its prey and often can be mistaken for a log. But don't be fooled. This reptile is surprisingly fast, both in and out of the water. It is the American alligator, like its cousin, the Nile crocodile, the alligator is one of the world's longest surviving species. Scientists put the age of the alligator species around 150 million years, meaning the alligator survived the great extinction of the age of dinosaurs some 65 million years ago. And in looking at the alligator, one can see the ancient designs of this living dinosaur. The muscular body, the armored scales, the long, large jaws, and huge, menacing teeth. Yes, the alligator is a massive apex predator who looks every bit the part. It can grow over 15 feet or 4.5 meters long and can reach weights of over 1,000 pounds or 454 kilograms. And the alligator will continue to grow throughout its lifetime. This includes its teeth. Typically, an alligator has around 80 teeth in its mouth. The bite force of the alligator is so great, however, that it often loses them to the bite, which is okay with the alligator. It simply grows more in response. In fact, a normal alligator will grow between 2,000 to 3,000 teeth over its lifetime. Despite this toothy situation, the alligator does not use its teeth for chewing as it swallows its prey whole. Instead, 
it uses its teeth to capture and kill. And what a bite. The jaws of an alligator snap closed with the average pounds per square inch, or PSI, of just under 3,000, the equivalent to 13,350 newtons. For comparison, the bite force of lions and tigers come in closer to 1,000 PSI, or 4,450 newtons. The American alligator's bite is way more powerful. Further adding to the menacing mouth of this primordial predator is how the alligator releases heat. Because they're cold-blooded, alligators cannot regulate their body temperature by sweating. Being a cold-blooded species, the alligator does not warm up to wintry cold weather. Brumation kicks in when the water is too cold for them to remain active. The alligator's metabolism slows down and they enter a lethargic state. During this semi-hibernation, the alligator digs holes and tunnels in the water banks around it. Alligators are opportunistic hunters. They will eat whatever they can catch and will employ whatever hunting methods work best to capture that prey. Fish, invertebrates, insects, amphibians, snakes, turtles, birds, small mammals, and even deer are on the menu. What is not on the menu? Humans. Since 1973 in the state of Florida, there have been only 23 cases of alligator-caused fatalities. In that same time period, nearly five people in the state died per year from lightning strikes. No, humans are definitely not making up the primary diet of alligators, but nearly everything else in the water is. One of the primary reasons scientists believe hunting underwater is so much more successful than ambush hunting by shore is that alligators are able to sense vibrations in the water through sensory organs in their snout, which lets an alligator gain more precision in its hunt. An alligator can also stay underwater for up to two hours at a time, patiently waiting for prey to come by. In some amazing cases, Alligators have been observed using tools to hunt. Yes, an alligator is capable of using sticks on its snout while it lays perfectly still in an attempt to lure birds looking to nest. This behavior has been seen during peak nesting times for birds and is another example of the alligator's fierce intellect and honed survival skills. Slow or fast, the ancient alligator promises a sure death to any prey it catches. With its large bag of modern tricks and killer instincts, the American alligator proves again why he is king of the waterways. Its name has come to symbolize strength and power. It is highly adaptable, with a striking visual pattern and a killer striking ability to match. This next reptile spends its youth in the trees, waiting patiently for prey to come close enough to strike. Some species are excellent swimmers. Some avoid the water altogether. And as a deadly predator grows, so too does its diet. Meet the python, a species of over 30 snakes, all non-venomous, but very powerful. Naturally, pythons are welcomed contributors to thriving ecosystems across Asia, Africa, and Australia. It is known as an old world snake and is not native to North or South America and it still displays remnants of a pelvis and small hind leg limbs called spurs. The python also exhibits the primitive characteristic of having two lungs, while most snakes have evolved to have just one. All python species are marked by triangular-shaped heads and sharp, backward-curving teeth. Many python species are also arboreal, a classification given to tree-dwelling snakes. Arboreal pythons have longer teeth and extremely prehensile tails. The python is equipped with four rows of these curved teeth on its top jaw and two rows on its lower jaws. 
These teeth are key to its survival, as the curved design penetrates and hooks into the prey, allowing the python to hold on. These teeth also move prey into the esophagus to be swallowed. And when it comes to swallowing prey, the python is simply amazing. It's taken hundreds of years of evolution for the python to eat animals as big as it does. And that's just the beginning of the extraordinary evolutionary advantages pythons have evolved over time. The majority of python species are very large. However, the smallest python in the world, the anthill python, grows to only 24 inches or 61 centimeters in length. On the other end of the spectrum comes the reticulated python, which is the world's largest snake. This fairly aggressive species can reach lengths of 30 feet or 9 meters. This python is also quite heavy. Although not as heavy as the green anaconda, it can still reach to an impressive average of 250 pounds or 114 kilograms. Not far behind comes the African rock python, the largest snake in all of Africa. It can exceed 20 feet or 6 meters. The Burmese python, primarily of Southeast Asia, comes in at nearly the same size as the African rock python. It is normally around 15 feet or 4.5 meters long, but has been recorded reaching lengths of over 22 feet or 6.7 meters. Rounding out the biggest of the python family is Australia's entry, the amethystine python. It typically averages around 16 and a half feet or 5 meters long, but has been recorded at over 27 feet or 8.5 meters. Because most full-grown pythons are so big, they must move by scooting in a straight line. This is called rectilinear progression, as well as bad news from a predation standpoint. That is because this kind of movement is exhaustively slow. So slow that pythons cannot exceed speeds of 1 mile or 1.6 kilometers per hour across open ground. As such, the python became a master at slow hunting. As for python that hunt in trees, it's a myth that they'll launch themselves out of trees at prey passing by below. That is simply a recipe for injury, failure, or even death for a python. Instead, arboreal python do the same as all other python. They lay still and wait, and will even occasionally wiggle its tail to lure prey to come within striking range. To aid in its hunting efficiency, the majority of python have heat-sensing labial pits. These pits allow them to accurately detect the location of close-by warm-blooded prey. Once believed to use its massive muscular coils to crush the bones of its prey, recent scientific findings paint a much different picture of how the boa constrictor, cousin of the python, and other constrictors kill through suffocation. The constriction of prey actually works to cut off circulation and overwhelms the circulatory system, which in turn cuts off blood to the brain, leading to death. The python is able to feel when the heartbeat of its prey stops, at which time it begins the process of swallowing the prey whole. Once swallowed, digestion of bigger prey can take over a month, and large pythons can go months between meals with no problem. The prey itself is totally dependent on the size of the python and the environment. Smaller python dine on a diverse menu of lighter fare while the largest pythons are capable of eating crocodiles and large mammals. In learning how to play it slow, species of this snake are able to grow into giants. The python has mastered the slow hunting game with killer results. Alien-like, dreamlike, almost formless, it seems to flow its way through the water, poetic in its movements, until it moves on prey.
a favorite of divers who are also wary of its reach. It often hides in caves, crevices, holes, and rocks, patiently sitting and waiting. It is the moray eel. The moray eel calls temperate oceans around the world home, including all tropical and subtropical seas. It is most commonly found in and around coral reefs. All species lack the pectoral and pelvic fins that define most fish. Moray eels instead have long, muscular, snake-like bodies called serpentine, which is the easy answer to why people often mistakenly classify it as a snake rather than the fish it is. The moray eel family is composed of around 200 known eel species. It comes in a number of different sizes, from several species under one foot or a third of a meter, to the slender giant moray eel, the longest of the moray family, which can reach lengths of nearly 13 feet or 3.9 meters long. The average moray eel is much smaller, around 5 feet or 1.5 meters long. As for weight, the heaviest of the moray eels, the giant moray eel, can weigh as much as 66 pounds or 30 kilograms. Moray eels have developed a reputation for delivering a menacing look, as the moray constantly opens and closes its tooth-lined mouth in what many believe is a warning or threat. The truth is the moray eel does not breathe like a normal fish and must physically push or allow for water to enter its oral cavity and pass through its gills. This makes its appearance seem threatening, but the reality is that the moray in that moment is simply breathing. All moray species are split into two main divisions, true mores and snake mores. The only constant physical difference between the two divisions is that in the true mores, the dorsal fin starts behind its gill, whereas the dorsal fin only covers the tail region of the snake mores. Apart from that, all species can have unique features. A key physical trait that is different from species to species is the type of teeth they have. The moray eel that primarily eats fish has long, sharp, curved teeth. The moray eel that feasts primarily on crustaceans and hard-shelled animals has more blunt, grinding teeth. Of course, a third key difference between all moray eels is the coloration. The moray eel can be black, brown, gray, yellow, green, blue, orange, and white, and sometimes even a mix of many of those colors at once. And these colors can be hidden as well due to a unique adaptation most morays have made to survive. These moray eel constantly secrete a green-colored mucus that covers their entire bodies. The green moray from the Caribbean, who appears green thanks to the secretion of yellow mucus, boasts a similar adaptation. The mucus serves a number of ingenious purposes. First, it offers a layer of protection from the tight world of rock and coral that the moray inhabits. Similar to how a fish can squeeze through a hand when grabbed, the mucus allows the moray to squeeze through challenging areas in its environment. Secondly, the mucus works to keep parasites off the moray eel, which is highly susceptible to parasitic infections. In fact, the moray eel allows small animals such as shrimp to walk on its body and in its mouth to pick off parasites and help keep it clean. Thirdly, in some species, the mucus contains a mix of dangerous toxins that serves to deter predators from eating the moray. For some species, the mucus also helps in subduing prey, as the moray will rub its body all over prey it has captured. In addition to this specialized mucus, the moray eel has a number of other outstanding adaptations that help ensure hunting success. Moray attacks on humans are rare and usually occur when the moray is disturbed in its territory. Sometimes moray eels have even been known to bite divers who are feeding them. The truth is that due to the poor eyesight, the moray occasionally will bite fingers while reaching for food. Unfortunately, that can lead to finger food. Otherwise, 
the moray eel leaves humans well alone. Amazingly, moray eels have been documented hunting with grouper, with each species performing a specific role in the hunt. These two fish have even evolved their own form of communication during the hunt. The grouper will often work as the spotter and will alert the eel when it finds hiding prey. The eels will then flush out the prey. Then they will alternate in sharing the feast, as the moray will either get the meal for itself or flush the prey out to the waiting grouper. Which brings up the most intriguing hunting aspect of all about the moray eel. The way the moray eel feasts is out of this world. For the moray eel boasts two sets of jaws. The second set sit back further in its mouth, hidden, and slide forward once the moray has secured prey with the front jaws. Called pharyngeal jaws, given their recessed location in the mouth, these jaws are the moray eel's answer to not having the same suction ability that other fish use to strike and swallow prey. It is yet another killer adaptation the moray eel has made in order to be the highly successful ambush predator it is. A slow kill specialist whose serpentine body, fierce teeth, and jaws have captured much, much more than just our imaginations. In exploring the world's most successful ambush predators, we've examined ways they use the power of patience to rule the hunt, from the ferocious and stealth American alligator, to the python, the longest snake species in the world, to the mesmerizing serpentine fish with alien-like appendages, the moray eel. Their unique survival strategies have made them masters of their ecosystems and superb hunters who dominate their prey and their competitors with death-dealing technique. We hope you enjoyed witnessing their daily battles for survival and how they refine and utilize their slow and lightning-fast methods for ambushing and devouring prey. Our planet is brimming with life, and it is often a fight to the finish, where only the most cunning and lethal succeed. Join us as we explore the animal kingdom's deadliest predators on the next Killer Instincts.